Uh, I think Ms. Khan had a great idea. We're going to let everybody introduce themselves, although they need no introduction. Uh, we're thrilled to have them back. And I just want to say, I, this is such a wonderful day to have them back to tell you all about what college is really like. Um, some of them, of course, just a year ago were sitting here just like our seniors, wondering what's coming next and how will we make it and all that great stuff. So uh, welcome, everybody. And um, I'm going to hand over to Ms. Khan now. Thank you. All right, so we could just start, maybe start on this end and give us a little introduction, your name, where you're going to school, what year you are, and anything else you'd like to tell us. Uh, I'm Ryan Kincaid. I go to Boston College. I'm a sophomore. Um, hey, guys. I'm Cole Sand, and I'm a senior at Notre Dame. Um, I'm just in school instead of more. Uh, Kendall Miller, I go to the University of Richmond, and I'm a freshman. Hello, I am Catherine oh. Kelly, and I go to Ole Miss, and um, I'm also a freshman. Hi, I'm Sarah Glazer, I go to the University of South Florida, and I graduated two years ago, I'm feeling kind of old, but um, <laughs> I'm studying political science in the arts college. Hi, I'm John Whelan, the son of the famous Patrick Whelan. <laughs> and I'm a freshman at the University of South Florida. Hi, I'm Cindy Knowles. Um, I go to Davidson College and I'm a freshman. Woo! Alright, thank you very much. So now what we're going to do. We have a few questions we're going to go through, and if you all just want to pass the mic as you come up with your answers, and then at the end we'll have a little Q&A from you guys, so think of what questions you might have. Okay, so the first question I'd like to ask is, what is one memory from St. Stephen's that you might share with some of your college roommates or people you meet? Oh, uh, I shared with like all my teammates that I looked for flatbeds a lot last year, and I never found any, and they thought that was really exciting. <laughs> I shared that I went to private school for 14 years, and this is my first year going to public school. I talk about homecoming week a lot, and like, um, kind of like that, like coming from a private school and then going to like a big old um, public school. No one that has the same sort of homecoming events and stuff, and like you'll talk about like the banners and what. They're like, what? We had like 200 kids in our graduating class who we weren't doing that sort of stuff. So they always get a kick out of that when I explain it. So. Uh, everybody's always really shocked when I tell them that we have cookie break and cookies. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, how about telling us? Oh, did you? No. Oh, how about telling us about a tip you might have for our students sitting in front of you heading off to college in a few years? Um, I'd say to say hi to everyone and just uh, make friends because obviously you're going to go to college and probably not know many people and everyone's going to be in the same situation. So um, everyone's like vulnerable and. I'm um, not exactly sure what they're doing, so don't be scared. Just say hi to everyone, be yourself, be outgoing, um, and make friends quickly. And take a wide variety of classes, not just with inside the major, because it'll expose you to a lot of different types of people, um, professors, and really explore your interests in other topics. When you're moving in, keep your door propped open, so that way if people are walking by, they're like, what up? Like, and then you just get to make friends that way. It's really nice. Um, try everything. Like, high school is a really different experience. You have so many clubs, and you actually know the people running those clubs. It's a lot easier to get involved in stuff in high school than it is in college. And it's really important to like just put yourself out there. Like, that's something I really wish I had done more in high school. Looking back on it, uh, just trying. Everything like go to the one like the cake pop club or something. <laughs> but um, just like go to it, even if it's not something you would normally do. Just to meet people, just to see if it's something you'd like to get involved in. Yeah, I'd say the first sort of 
three or four weeks of your freshman year are kind of the most important to like meet people, especially like the people that live on your floor. So if you try to meet everyone on your floor by the first month of school, that's generally a good thing to go by. And that generally helps a lot. I would say the most important thing um, going into the freshman year and basically life in general is to manage your time well. Um, so what I did freshman year was I, before class start, made myself a whole schedule of when I was going to work on my homework, when I was going to go to the gym, when I was going to um, go like do something fun. So it's great to get involved in stuff and you should definitely make sure that you, um, when you go to college, get very heavily involved, but also make sure that you plan out your time so that you're not overextended. And uh, one last one, make sure to talk to your professors because like we have a really good relationship with our teachers here. So make sure to talk to them because they're just as chill as everyone is here. Um, so, because they're kind of scary because obviously like they're professor or whatever, but like they're actually like down to earth people that want you to like get good grades. I have another one too. Um, there's a lot of like helpful facilities at your school that I did not know about until the finals week. So um, definitely do your research on like different places that can help you because there's a lot of like freshmen like things that you can get to do with a lot of the faculty members um, that'll really set you up for success in your school. Thank you. Um, how about, could you tell us a little bit about technology in each of your schools and how you use it in the classrooms, at home, in your dorms? So just tell us a little about what kind of tech you're using. None of my professors let me use my laptop, so all my notes are handwritten and everything is basically handwritten except for the homework, which is on the computer. Um, for me, math was actually my most um, like tech intensive class, which was a oh, big change from uh, high school, um, where everything was just on paper. But just the way the grading works, it's not gonna make sense for a teacher to have to grade like hundreds and actually count thousands of papers. And so um, the homework was actually online, and I actually learned a lot more from it, just because um, it was able to correct me. And sometimes it was a pain, like I put a zero at the end of something, and it would mark the entire thing wrong. But, uh, uh, but besides like little things like that, um, it wasn't so much technology in the classroom, but out of the classroom doing your homework, um, it's good to have a really good laptop. You can get by with like an iPad, I would say. Um, Kat disagrees. Everyone else disagrees. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So. Um, at, at Notre Dame, at least, uh, they don't let you use computers in the classrooms for the most part. Um, I've never seen any student use an iPad ever. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know if that's bad up here, but um, a lot of projects, um, a lot of like Excel and stuff on the computer, but just not done inside the classroom, so. I would highly recommend getting um, a good laptop before you go to college, whether it's a Mac or a PC. It depends on your major. Some majors, like if you want to go into graphic design, you want a Mac. If you want to go into engineering, I think you want a PC. I'm not either of those, so I just have a Mac because it's trendy, but um, <laughs> definitely get a good laptop and learn how to use it, learn how to use all like Excel, Google Docs, Google Sheets, everything, because I've had to kind of teach myself that because um, I never really used any of it in high school, and everything is on Google Docs, um, and everything I submit is online, so just get used to it so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I'll correct myself. And the, main, the main other thing that you need a laptop for is typing. But be prepared to type a lot of papers and stuff. That's not going to be fun on an iPad. I use a laptop a lot more in college than I ever did in high school, partly because a lot of our textbooks are online. Uh, and some of our grading is online as well, like John mentioned. Like, we have online graders sometimes. Um, I took my intro in computer science course, and that was almost entirely online. Like, we would show up to class, but our textbook, all of our assignments, uh, our final was eight hours long. It was on our laptop. We could take it anywhere, and we could submit it to the online grader as many times as we needed to. Uh, and so, having a laptop, none of that final would have run on an iPad. Although, 
like in high school, the way I used it was like I'd use my laptop for things like watching Netflix, and I'd use my iPad for school. It's completely reversed. <laughs> like I use my iPad basically just in my dorm room and my laptop for all of my school stuff. Yeah, one thing I do, I've got a mix of classes where some classes allow you to use computers, some don't. And for the classes that I'm doing handwritten notes, I actually end up typing everything after the fact on my computer just because when it comes to finals and studying, like having just a Google, like a doc that you can just search stuff in is a lot easier than going through papers, so. Thank you. All right, tell us a little bit about how St. Stephen's prepared you all for college compared to some of your peers that you've done. Academically, I feel like I have been groomed perfectly for college. Um, because of the workload here, it is non-existent at Ole Miss compared to St. Stephen's. I kid you not, there's literally, I have two hours of homework at Ole Miss and here I'm studying like six hours a day. Right, Miss Father? Yeah. Um, so definitely, to, just because it doesn't exist at Ole Miss, I still study a lot, but it's definitely a lot easier in college if you go to Ole Miss. Not everywhere <laughs> is like Ole Miss, I promise you that. <laughs> um, I'd say St. Stephen's really prepared me well in terms of writing papers. Um, especially when you're young in college, you can be writing a lot of papers in your introductory classes. And people like Mr. Moore, and Mr. Yanelli, Mr. Hertrick, um, like really helped me with that. I think help me give me a little leg up on some of my other classmates and just take advantage of like resources because um, a lot of schools have like writing centers but I think St. Stephen's really helped me with that. So. One thing that St. Stephen's helped me with, it's not really academic, but um, I felt like I got really involved because it was a small school and so I was able to join clubs that I maybe wouldn't have done if I was at a larger school. Um, and so that's something that I've carried into college. So I've been able to get put myself out there and get involved in things that I probably wouldn't have gotten involved in if I hadn't already started to get involved in different things like student government in high school. So that's what I got from St. Stephen's, um, not really on the academic side. And I would definitely encourage everyone to get more involved in high school because it sets you up for getting involved in college. I'd say the biggest thing that St. Stephen's prepared me for, and part of this is just because of Davidson, Davidson's really reliant on their honor code, and I know that really confused my roommate, who came from this large public high school. Um, most of our tests are take-home, and they're unlimited time tests. It's like you find a place to take it, and then, like I had my lab teacher recommend, you could probably only spend an hour on this, but if you feel like you need to take nine hours to do it, uh, just stuff like that, and that really stressed her out, and the fact that you can take it anywhere, like just navigating the fact that our teachers trust us was really difficult for a lot of people I know, and especially like navigating the fact that your teachers will know you at my college was really difficult for some people, uh, and it was really easy for me to go into office hours and get to know my professors, partly because of St. Stephen's and just getting so used to the environment here and the fact that I'm used to my teachers trusting me. Yeah, St. Stephen's really like prepared me just like overall, like for kind of everything, but a lot of the kids from like my school are coming from like the prep schools up north, so it's kind of like we're all kind of similar to an extent, but like you can see like in papers and stuff, like everyone's like, what'd you get, what'd you get? I'm like, um, I guess I could tell you. We just don't really do that here, I guess. And I was like, oh, okay, well, um, you guys on my side have had Miss Unelli writing help or anything, because you know, a lot of grammar issues. But, um, but it's just kind of interesting how like St. Stephen's like, really, like you get that one-on-one -on -one time, and I think that's like totally different from any other school, and um, that's what, uh, I also think St. Stephen's prepared me to be an independent student, so like I don't have to rely really like a lot on other people to like help me do something. Like I don't have to like, oh, can you go with me to talk to my professor? No, you're an adult. You can do it yourself.
And St. Stephen's really helped me do that because like you can go and ask your teachers for help. And like now I'm not afraid to go and ask my professors, like this made no sense at all. Like can you explain it? So and they're more than willing to help you usually. Yeah, and I think another thing is I can see this more from the athletic department at play golf at BC, where there's a lot of stuff that the athletic department will help you with notes and something like that when you're traveling and something like that. But the same thing is true for really anyone. Um, BC has a service for papers for anybody to use, and tutors and all that is all very accessible if you ever need it. So use them if you need it. All right, before we turn it over to Q&A, we have one more question for the panel, then we'll open it up to all of you for some questions. So what is the best advice you can give to our upper school student body here to do before they graduate? Uh, play as many sports as you can. It's really fun, and like you meet so many people. Uh, enjoy sports. Or, or like honestly clubs too. I think the Amara Marine Club still kick it, so maybe go go join that club. Um, chess club, I heard that's been revamped or whatever. Um, so go hit up that as well. Um, yeah, you should just be active in school. School's fun. Practice not sleeping. Um, stay out all night if you can, uh, because there's no sleep in college. Okay, I'm going to say the opposite of that. <laughs> I think that um, it's really important in high school to like, uh, make sure that your sanity is in check. There's nothing worse than like going into college being like unstable. So just make sure that, <laughs> so make sure that you, um, you schedule enough time for yourself in high school. Like um, the memories that you make with your friends, lessons you learn with your friends um, are more important than racking up a ton of extracurriculars to impress someone you're going to see. My biggest advice would be uh, don't stress out about getting applying and getting into college and going to college. You're, it's going to happen. I spent the majority of probably sophomore, junior, and senior year stressing out and we're going to get into Harvard or whatever. Obviously that did not happen. But, <laughs> but I honestly think that no matter where you go, you're going to have a great experience. College is college, classes are classes. Like, you're going to get a degree no matter where you go. So just enjoy your time at St. Stephen's. Um, try not to stress out so much about trying to impress college admissions officers because there are making judgments on things that you really can't control a lot of the time. Um, so spending your years of like 15 through 18 trying to do things to impress like John said, somebody that you're never going to meet, an admissions officer, is probably, is like, it's a huge thing that I regret doing, and that would be my biggest advice. I think that instead of, like, get involved and put yourself out there and try a whole bunch of little things, but do that early so you can figure out what you want to get deeply involved in. So you're not, like, just a little bit involved with something by the time you're a senior. Like, look for deep involvement in clubs and places where you can actually make an impact. Um, and put yourself out there to make an impact in the clubs that you're already involved in. I have one from Caroline Kelly, uh, student chaplain, class of 2019. Um, she said over and over again that she wishes that she did more things outside of school instead of making her main focus on her college resume, whatever, applications, um, like solely St. Stephen's stuff. Like all of her hours were like mostly St. Stephen's because she played piano, like did the student chaplain, she was like president of math and um, <laughs> reading and all of that stuff. But she said, that she wishes she spent more time doing something that she felt like mattered to her than something that mattered to like what she thought somebody else would want for her. Because it's not about them, it's about you. Do what makes you happy and where you can be successful, but where someone else wants you to be successful. 
I'd say use like the end of your high school career to make sure you work on getting outside of your comfort zone as that will prepare you for college and just help you feel more comfortable getting to know people, also play new sports, read books if you don't do that. Um, really just anything you're not used to doing that will just um, diversify your background and help you be more prepared for college and um, more open to meeting new people and doing new things that you hadn't done previously. All right, so now let's open it up to you guys out here. Some questions for our panel. Just raise your hand and maybe pass your mic. Not tell each other the truth. I am not a 
clean individual. My blankets are on the floor, okay? So be honest. And then she was like, oh my God, like, you're disgusting. And I was like, no, I'm not. And then we got like a lot of people involved and then she found out that I was opening my slipper with a pocket knife, which is allowed, which is allowed. And then she was like, move out or I'm pressing charges. And I was like, what? And so then I had to call a lawyer and I was like, what do I do? And so then they were like, just move out. You don't want to deal with this all year. So um, be honest with your roommate. And now I don't have a roommate and I live alone. Um, <laughs> nobody else wanted a room with me. <laughs> I kid you not. Everyone was like, I heard you're crazy. I'm like, I'm not, I swear. So be honest. Um, so my roommate and I were like exact opposites. You know how you polar opposite for like your book? Like you don't want that. Like a hundred percent. So she she didn't do anything we did and she slept the whole time. Like literally all she did was sleep and then like she had the lights. We didn't have the lights on for a week. So I guess you're helping the environment, but like you weren't really like helping like staying awake or whatever. Um so Ended up, I was after a round of golf, I came back and all her stuff was gone, so I was super happy. And she never told me she was gonna leave, so um, now I didn't have a roommate for a little bit, and then now someone's coming in, and that's good because someone wanted to live with me, I guess. <laughs> okay, uh, not all roommates are evil. Just throw that out there. Mine is really nice. Um, we like to play little pranks on each other. We have like a stuffed rat around here. Um, so, uh, my advice for roommates is like they don't have to be your best friend. Um, I think that's the most shared advice around. Um, it's like I like having him like, oh, I need someone to go to the dining hall with. I don't want to eat alone. And it's like, okay, you can come along. Like, we're on that level, but it doesn't need to be like, oh, I want your attention all the time because that's going to be really annoying. Um, but to answer your question, the, it's really easy to switch roommates. And my advice would be, if you don't like your roommate, just switch as soon as you can. There's no shame in doing that. All right, so I'm going to have the alumni panel stay put. And if you have any further questions, feel free to hang around. Otherwise, to cook the break.